Discretion is advised. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Monday night. It's the Monday night show, the Monday night guest show, and we're here. We couldn't be here yesterday, Sunday night show, simply because, well, you know, sometimes you are busy, you know. Um, Graham has been busy, I've been busy, you know, that's going to happen every now and again. Work's going to come into play, and a number of different personal factors. So we'll try and bring you a show every single week, Sunday and Monday. But we're pleased to give you the Monday night show, and we do have a Monday night guest, as from 8 pm this evening, and I am exactly um, half an hour away from that. What about you guys? Because we're actually on time already. Graham, aren't we? Yeah, we are. For once, we seem to be running on time. So I'm pleased about that. I'm not sure everyone else is as well. I think they probably will be. And talking of everybody else, we do have a few people in already. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us tonight on the Monday Night Show. Uh, we have Andrew Leonard White. He's a regular viewer. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, he says, hello, Ben and Graham. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. And, um, you know, you've been a great star to us. You know, you came on on the Monday night show previously and we had a great time, great chat, talked about many different things around mainly exploration, but also equipment of which you use. Grim, um, what I want to talk about is, uh, again, we will talk of the very subject coronavirus. Of course, we are going through yet more changes with the coronavirus, not just in our workplaces, but in our day to day lives. And, and Grim, uh, are you finding with your job particularly that uh, coronavirus is affecting you in any way? No, the company that I work for are uh, pretty adequate with um, equipment. They've got everything, if not, actually, they've probably got more than enough, more than what's actually needed, which is good. And it safeguards um, myself and staff and, and the service users. So we've, we're doing pretty well. Good stuff, Graham. Good stuff. Well, actually, what I can say certainly is being back to work now myself, I'm really, really overjoyed by that. Uh, it's good to see, like many of you that are now going back to work, it's good to see the faces that you haven't seen for a while. I mean, it's been the best part of about three months for me personally, and I'm sure there's many of you out there that have been watching the stream previously and also current who are maybe not back to work yet or otherwise going back to work. But the point being is this, is, you know, it's nice to see people again. It's nice to sort of go back to a said normality. But even with that, Grim, uh, we are finding that even with this said normality, that we're not entirely normal, you know, in the way that we go about our daily lives at the moment. And what we do realise at the moment, of course, is, is that we are going through uh, every single day with a particular different, uh, you know, style of changes, you know, like, for example, face masks, Grim. I mean, are you having to wear face masks in your line of work? Yes, the um, company I work for um, wishes for us to wear them at all times. Um, it's not quite appropriate to do so at all times um, right. because it's quite slump it's slight, it's quite smothering. And it's it's not a nice sensation. I mean, I've tried no. it. I've tried it for solidly for nearly three hours, and that no, I, I just I ended up just sticking it under. Yeah not very comfortable Graham is it and I will say that actually you know wearing them is of course for our own safety and it's um it's not just for our safety but it's for the safety of others I mean certainly where I work in the line of uh, tourism yeah. I suppose you've got to be very careful of of you know contract you know contracting the virus of course even potentially spreading the virus you know you may not have got the virus yourself but of course you can carry it and of course um that is another way in which it can move around. But of course, Grim, um, exactly. just want to say a quick, quick mention to a few people. We have Elaine Slade in uh, with us as well. Thank you, Elaine, for joining us this evening. Hello, and, Elaine. Thank you for joining us, yes. And uh, Grim, I think she can hear you well, loud and clear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord, I think you were going to say. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, wonderful man he is. I've never met him. Have you, yes. Grim? Well, one day, maybe. 
you've got to be a good boy and you've got to behave yourself, I'm sure. Um, who else we got? We have uh, Andrew Lennon White in, as I say. We have Elaine Slade, and yeah, yeah, it seems as if we're rocking and rolling, ladies and gentlemen. And we do have, as I said, as of eight o'clock this evening, we do have our special guest, um, and we want to give another thanks to Andrew Leonard White for coming on on last Monday's show. Graham, it's yes. a week already. Amazing, isn't it? I can't believe how quick it's gone. It's been um, terrifically fast, especially with everything that's going on personally um, and I will, can't go into details of, but at the moment it's been a hectic time personally for me. I'm keeping it together for for the show. Good man, good man, Grim. And um, just to mention as well, we have Elaine saying actually or suggesting that she can hear everybody well, which is fantastic news and we're making huge steps to pro towards progress. I will say though that uh, it is mentioned, Grim, that you are very bright, but that could be because of the studio that you're in. Um, you are in a very tip particular different type of studio today, aren't you, mate? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm. I'm, I'm in um, sunny Sydney. Mm. There we go, yeah. sunny Sydney. I flew. I flew there this, um, you know, early hours of this um, of um, yesterday evening. That sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Lovely long flight in a private jet. Yeah. Mm. Ben and Graham on the side. Dreams are great, aren't they, mate? I, I, do, I do look a good dream. Well, anyway, we're talking about coronavirus. And, Graham, we were talking about face masks. And I will say as well about face masks is that uh, we, in particular, with the job I'm working in, are expected to wear face masks. And more particular around members of staff, uh, members of staff, members of the general public. And, of course, they are, again, expected to. And as we know, um, at this point in time, we can travel um, to... Well, we're still technically in a lockdown, but we can actually travel to different places as provided we have, um, as public sector, if you like, public transport, provided we have uh, the right necessary PPE, mm -hmm. such as face masks. So not everybody's wearing them. And of course, nobody can be forced to wear these things, of course, but, you know, we are expected to wear them. And um, Grim, um, have you seen any diff a difference in, in, in the way people have been behaving with the, the, the lapse in the lockdown? But of course, we're still in a lockdown, aren't we? Well, I believe um, um, us down this end of the um, country are, are, are behaving reasonably well. I haven't seen anything to do, you know, um, out, out, outside. Um, the, the seafront has has never been like crowded, crowded, um, and people seem to be really taking note of the social distancing. Um, which is good. And uh, the buses, um, everyone that I see that's sitting on the bus um, are wearing a mask. So the bus drivers are pushing for that requirement to be the case. Otherwise, they can't board the bus, which is which is good. It's positive. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, with, with regards to masks, there are a few different masks. Because, you, I mean, everyone will think of a face mask as a surgical mask, wouldn't they? Um, but there are there, there are different ones. You basically have like the the masks that you would wear to do like household chores, um, chemicals. There's special fluid masks as well, which is the mask that um, the company that I work for, charitable company, may I add. But they have got loads of those in, so they're fluid masks, and they last between four to six hours. Well, that's that's really good. And, and what we do know, Graham, as well, that um, even though we are in public transport, particularly expected to wear face masks, it's, it's actually face coverings is the particular thing about uh, face masks. So as many of us will wear face masks, and of course, if you're working, you're provided with them. And if you're going out and about, you can purchase them. Uh, but you know, it's face covering. So of course you can use anything. You can use material, provided your face is covered. Isn't that right? Is that what you're finding as well, Graham? Yes, I have. I have actually seen um, some some of these strange face coverings being quite hilarious. Um, I've, I've actually seen not well, not in public, not in Dover, thankfully. But um, someone put it up on post up on Facebook, and um, uh, it's it's this chap that's using used an old pair of underpants, and he's just he's got like an elastic strap around around you know around around that you know, that, that bit and. And you've got the front of his underpants, and you can see like the opening to the like the that area. <laughs> it's quite hilarious to see, but luckily we haven't seen anything quite strange like that. 
well, maybe, well, maybe because we haven't done it ourselves. That's why it's not been seen. Because we are a bit crazy, us Ben and Graham. Well, soon enough, Graham. I'm sure we'll be able to get some um, some Ben and Graham face masks. What do you think? Yes. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, talking of face masks, I have actually gone and got myself face mask mask because the original face masks that I've been used to recently are quite uncomfortable. Not just because I've got a beard, but actually, Graham, I've found that they are quite hard on the ears. Um, you know, it's the, the straps that go around. They're really uncomfortable. And so I thought, well, no, I can't be doing, dealing with this, you know, for large amounts of time on end. So I, I went and got... Uh, my own face mask. And my own face mask is actually a Leeds United face mask, football mask. And I thought, I wonder if I'll be able to wear this or not. Well, I wore it at work the other day and it was okay. I say okay. Nobody said anything about it, apart from a couple of customers. And they, it sort of started off a bit of a conversation. Good, might I add. Uh, but, you know, most companies will not mind you wearing your own face masks. Uh, and I, I, I think particularly if, of course, what you're wearing is not particularly offensive or if it's not too wacky. Uh, but I think mm -hmm. as, as a whole, I think everybody is expected to have the freedom to be able to wear what's comfortable to them, which 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 is important. You know, the stuff that you can actually wear at the moment, you know, the, the, the general, you know, the blue ones, you know, with the white straps, they're very uncomfortable. Yes. And they're, yeah. they're, I suppose they're just like, quickly made i suppose what do you think Graham? i mean that's what that's how i see it yeah so as i was saying earlier there's so many different kinds of face masks going about um i, I quite like the one that's got like a there's a little vent in the side a circular vent um it, it sort of come it cups it's like a cup so and that, i think that they're quite nice and they they last quite a while actually up to about six months or so you can use those you can wash them as well yeah yeah, which, which is good. Well, that's it. I mean, I, I know particularly in the company I work for, they are talking about giving us a, um, a number of uh, face masks, which then can be used to be rewashed. You know, you can yeah. you can keep them. They're not the throwaway ones. And of course, you don't want to be using the throwaway ones any longer than you have to. Uh, but interestingly, Graham, it's um, it's been said. I mean, I was listening to the news this morning and they were talking about how it can be seen about travel, about how in the next near to distant future, so we're talking over the next week or so, um, France in particular are going to be seen to be on the green list of countries to visit. So you, in other words, mm. travel to France and you should be able to travel without having to self-isolate, which is uh, for up to two weeks, which is a very good thing. So certainly uh, there's going to be a lot of people, I would say, in the next week or so, within the next week, uh, be travelling to places like Europe, such as France, um, and maybe even as far as Italy and Spain. So I think when we say we're getting back to a said normal, Graham, I w should we be concerned? Because what I'm seeing, certainly, I don't know about you, but what I'm seeing, certainly in the local area of where we are, is there's a lot of traffic at the moment, a lot of traffic. What mm. would you say on the, on the matter? Would you say the same around your place of work? There or? is. No, there most certainly is. I go down the seafront most days to uh, walk, keep fit, walk the dog, etc. And the uh, on Thursday... I could not believe the the um, the, the traffic lorries. They, mm. There was just so many of them, and it was and cars as well, all going down towards the the, the, the um, ferry terminal. By um, after we walked the dog, we went off to Folkestone for a little bit of a drive. The whole way up towards the round, well, um, is it Roundwall Tunnel? Is it Round Hill Tunnel? Um, just on the outskirts of Folkestone. Yeah. It was lined up with lorries. Yeah. Just um, just unbelievable. And cars, loads of cars as well, within the same vicinity. It's It was just diabolical. A lot more cars on, on, the, on the streets, yes, definitely. I, I, I think people are becoming more daring. Well, yeah, Graham, I, I would have, I would have to agree with you. I mean, you know what we have to appreciate, even up till now. Uh, I just want to hold that thought just for a moment because I want to say hello to Lee. Lee Turner is in the uh, stream with us. Thank you, Lee, for joining us. And he also says it sounds great. Thank you very much for your pleasant words. And um, we're Lovely. glad to bring you something a little bit more. Um, let's just say professional guys because that's what it's all about we want it to be pleasurable for you as much as it is for us and of course if it's not working for us and it's mm -hmm. most certainly not working for you guys okay so we we do need to brush up on these things and we're pleased to say that it's working so anyhow anyway i was just saying about um people walking about getting about out and about traveling um during the lockdown and of course we are still in lockdown you know we're not we're not out of lockdown yet um but of course we are 
I think, given a little bit more flexibility from the government, I think, um, we are used, we are, we're being able to use that initiative to go about our daily lives, you know, whether it's work or whether it's out to visit friends and family, we can do so provided we continue with the safe social distancing rules. Now, we know already, yeah. Graham, don't we, that the, the government have said that we're going to bring the social distancing rule down to a metre. Now, I can say, particularly with the company I'm involved with, uh, they are of the view that actually we should really continue to keep the two, two metre distance rule, which actually yes. I don't think is a problem. And I think actually that's a very wise thing to do. Mm. I think still, you know, we already know, don't we, from some of the research that's been done, that actually a two metre rule is going to be far safer than a one metre rule when you talk about sneezing and things like Most that. Most definitely. That's the reason why they put the two metre rule in, in place than, than 1.5 metres than most of the world actually put in place. They wanted to do, go that little bit extra. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, and then they took, cut it down to a metre. But think about it. Just think, 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 about, well, a metre from the 4th of July, isn't it? So, which is soon. Um, just think about what were we doing um, social distancing-wise before? Just everyone, just think about it. Before coronavirus was dumped upon us, what, we, what were we actually doing social distancing? I, I'm almost 99% sure of the time I was at least, at least two, if not three metres from, from a person. If I was in the supermarket, I wouldn't be a one metre. I would be at least two metres because it's personal space. Everyone knows, and unless, unless it's a friend, for example, a, clo a close friend, best pals and stuff, yeah. you, 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 know, yeah. you can stand reasonably close. And have a conversation, but Joe blogs in the street that it's it's not appropriate to do that, and, and you you don't feel right. You feel a bit enclosed. So I, I, I'm almost certain that no one was doing one meter. They were all already probably doing two meters anyway. Yeah. Well, this is it, Graham. And, and, and the thing is, I, I will say, just uh, on the basis of the uh, lockdown and the rules of which we are to be sort of expected to follow, you know, with the social distancing particularly, and I think most people are lapsing, I think, in certain areas. Um, I have seen a number of coaches over the last few weeks, or last week, I should say, where people are taking coach rides. And of course, although it's probably not the best mode of transport mm -hmm. for many people, people are using it. And, and on, on, you know, just to follow from that is I have also found that a lot of uh, traffic, a lot of traffic is, is out and about on our roads. Uh, more traffic than, um, I would say, normal traffic. Um, people are uh, getting out and about. And, and what's, I think, particularly concerning, if, if you are to be one to be concerned on the matter, is that given that other countries still are facing... Uh, the very virus threat you know you've got brazil again they are suffering and you've got uh shanghai is it shanghai Graham? i think shanghai also have been one to have yes. also had another spike um but I, but i think we've got to be careful haven't we that you know if we if we tend to go back to normality too quickly that actually before we know it you know with the ports opening and everything else that you know people are potentially going to come down with that second wave um we hope that doesn't be the case, is not the case, because there's some some real fears, mm. Graham, isn't there, about um, how the government will look after companies should they go into a, a second lockdown and potential second furlough, or would there be a second furlough, which is the question that all of us, I'm sure, are asking, because where's that money got to come yes. from? Exactly, exactly, it is a bit of a concern. Um, I'm I, I'm getting back to the um, position of so social distancing. That's why the government opted, I feel, for the two metres instead of the 1.5, like most nations were doing, was so it gives us that extra space, that, that extra leave, give, you know, leave, leave so we can, like, not become too hardened financially from, from, from like, a, a crash, which we will be getting. It will be happening. It's going to happen. But maybe that's the reason why they were thinking that two meters maybe that is actually the reason why they left it two and a half three weeks for lockdown it's as well i mean we we at the end of the day we do need to take into consideration that um all nations our businesses they need to make money and and produce items through through, through a workforce to be able to keep their citizens 
safe. So we, they, they need to do that. I just hope that the crash is not going to be too hard hitting. It's going to be hard, but not hopefully not too hard. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand, Graham, what you're saying. And and I would also say that, I mean, Lee's just made a very good point in the chat. He actually says about how if people go about their lives, you know, uh, respecting the social distance and mm. um, being aware of the fact that we do have a virus still on our doorsteps, you know, and it's not gone away. Uh, uh, but I, I would say, yeah, as long as we continue, uh, like Lee has suggested, I think as long as we, you know, continue to play it safe and be aware of the threat, then, of course, we can go about our lives with a with a said normality with a few little mm -hmm. tweaks here and there but but we'll say graham i just want to add as well is that um would you now say because i i mean this is going to be somewhat controversial i don't want to i don't want to come across controversial guys if i do come across controversial please tell me but i will say this i would say that as much as we know that covid19 is not your average flu all right and i, I accept that and i think it's fair to say that we know that has that it has caused significant deaths of course not necessarily solely COVID-19 but of course with yeah. other medical problems uh, but I would say that with that with with COVID-19 that um, it is similarly going to be I would say like the flu or cold the common cold because like the flu and the common cold it's not gone anywhere so I think the same thing will happen with the the coronavirus it's another strain of a flu if you like maybe more severe in some yes. areas but I would say it's always going to be with us, sad to say. And I, and I, I would well, say... Take, take into consideration what the, um, the scientists from uh, Italy... Was it Italy? We spoke about on uh, the last, yes. last live. He's almost certain that, that it's not mutating like it should be mutating. And it, it actually seems to be coming weaker so maybe it's not able to mutate. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. And I hope you're right. But I do think it. Yeah, I think, so do I. Yeah, mm -hmm. Graham, I'm I'm absolutely in agreement with you. But I would say I would say that you know, given what is going on uh, with maybe the, the deaths now, of course, obviously we are taking precautions, and I think it is dwindling numbers wise. Although we are still getting deaths, we're not maybe getting as, as many deaths as we had been in a short space of time. But I would say yeah. that, you yeah. know, this is always going to be with us. I think it will always be with us. And, and you know, like the flu and the, and the common cold, um, do we continue to go about our lives as we did previously without face masks on the basis that we, if we, you know, hypothetically were to get a flu or cold, could be COVID-19, that um, we go about our lives as we would if we had the cold or flu? Or are we to say that, well, you know, we are going to accept maybe that the, the virus is with us forever, um, but it have its fits and starts and uh, that we should continue to, you know, social distance and not just social distance, but also wear necessary PPE, uh, which in a sense will have benefit towards colds and flus. Because naturally, if somebody's feeling unwell, as much as, you know, you're likely to catch that flu or cold if you're with somebody for, for large amounts of time. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you're not wearing uh, facial equipment, then of course you, you could then catch it, germs. But but, yeah. actually, but actually, would we have as many cases of flu and cold in particular you know and colds in particular if of course we continue on with the social distancing and of course the facial masks that we are with COVID-19 so I think it's it's a very particular subject I think we could actually live our lives much more healthily if I thought we could go on you know having keeping all the social distancing keeping all the facial masks what do you think Graham do you think it's going to have an impact on other illnesses that we could maybe potentially avoid well, yes, I, I do. Yeah, um, it's a difficult one to answer. Uh, personally, I would like um, people to adhere to, and I know I, keep, know I keep saying this, and I'm not say I'm not stating that um, the majority of the British peoples are unclean, but we, we need to keep our hygiene at the required standard. The, that's the main key in this. It's always making sure that we're we, we've got clean hands, at least at least clean hands up to the wrists. You know, really done nice and clean, washed all the time. Hmm. That's what we <clears> need <throat> to do. Okay. Um, with, with regards to face masks, I probably feel that we are going to be using those at least until this time next year. 
Yeah. And it starts to dwindle away a bit before the summer holidays. Um, I, I think that on, on public transport, it might be an idea to keep using those on public transport because, I mean, public transport is known as, as, as quite a dirty environment. And I'm, I'm sorry if that's the way it is because we have those certain individuals that that are, are for some reason, way, shape or form, are not able to, um, how do you say this, um, follow, follow specific guidelines for their own safety and others. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get that, Graham, aren't you? I mean, in all walks of life, regardless of the rules, you're going to get people that will simply feel they know better and, of course, they will do things how they wish to do things and they, they will not always comply with what is the best for them, you know, and, of course, we will see that in all sorts of things. But but I agree with you, you know, I think people are now, I think, getting back to a said normality to the point where they maybe are forgetting just what severity we had on our hands, you know, with the, the COVID-19. And of course, it hasn't gone away. It might have, the strain might have got weaker. It might have been, been seen to be under more control. But just let's say, for example, just because, of course, um, it slows down a little bit in the sense of the, 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 the contraction rates, we have to still appreciate that this is still a, a virus and a very deadly one. And, and of course, if we don't um, keep up with the said social distancing and the cleanliness and the hygiene elements, then this can come back with a vengeance. But if you think 65.4 million people in the United Kingdom, Graham, who are or thereabouts the population of the country, mm -hmm. if you take that as just one nation, but by and large, if you take the whole world, I mean, it's over 60 to 70 million, uh, billion, isn't it? I think the world. And if that's the case, then a very small percentage of the world have actually had this virus, in which case means even though the numbers are still quite high, they're not actually that high at all. So we've got to be careful that, you know, this could actually take on and uh, it could get a lot worse if we if we um, lapse. Would, would, would you agree with me on that, Graham? I think uh, what, what would the viewers think? I mean, I think that's something we've got to be particularly aware of. Yeah, I, I support you on that um, quite freely, Ben. I do feel also that um, um, at the moment, and I would say probably for the next 18 months at least, with the the continuing of the um, guidelines to do with like face masks and and so on, I'm hoping that the government will put in necessary um, reg regulations with regards to air flights, arrivals. I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't really care from where where you're coming from or whatever you know uh, i've got my family my my mum who's not, not very well um i have her to worry about I, I don't need an added concern because someone decides that they just want to come over for a jolly and they happen to have some kind of virus and then spread it to about 300 people yeah mm. Cheers for that mate well, yeah, but I will. I'll give. I'll give respect to um, the foreign community because, um, you know, with my line of work, you know, I've seen many people uh, travelling to the UK or through the UK that are also taking the necessary steps, not just with social distancing, but also with face protection. And of course, it's great to see that, despite the fact that it is a global pandemic, that actually people, regardless of um, nationality and language, are working together. We all know. I think it's fair to say, given by what we're seeing. We all know the severity of the situation and we all we are all trying to work to the best of our ability to try and yeah. eradicate this. So, you know, it's really, really interesting. But Graham, we have spoken quite a bit about um, coronavirus and thanks guys for bearing with us because we do have um, our guests coming on very, very shortly. Um, in fact, at eight o'clock, so a couple of minutes or so. Um, and um, our, our guest actually, for ladies and gentlemen, for your purpose, will be June Murphy. Now, we have put it in the rolling script, Graham, uh, to the viewers so they know who we're referring to. Now, some of you will know who June Murphy is and some may not. Just a quick background uh, and she'll be with us shortly. Um, June Murphy is somebody that um, had a, a, a large career within the Eurotunnel site of um, the place of which I work, or should I say the location. But also, she has had some involvement with the Dover, Exp Dover Express and she had um, a, a column. Um, which she wrote a number of different things over the course of um, many weeks to months, in fact, years. Um, and we want to sort of, don't we, Graham? We want to know just what it was like to, for her in that environment. Yes. Yeah. And, 
and she's fantastic guys we're really really privileged because june murphy is somebody of the community you know she is a wonderful woman you know lots of people in dover know who june murphy is uh, she's done a lot for the community and she's just a barrel of joy so i am really really grateful that we've been able to get june uh, she will be with us it's actually uh 1859 so we are expecting to see her very shortly but in the meantime grim um what do you know about june and, and what can you say about june you um she's something else she's an amazing an amazing person she's selfless She's caring. She's 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 really really nice. Um, I I'm not able to find anything negative at all about this lady. She has always been uh, a dear a dear friend um, to not just myself but to many other people. She's been brilliant to be around. Um, that's basically all I can add to that. All he can add to that. Yeah, she's fantastic. And, um, you know, as soon as we hear from June and we bring her in, uh, we will continue on with the, the rest of the interview. Um, but June is, um, like I say, she's a wonderful lady and lots of people know of her. And um, we've had some fun with uh, with June, haven't we, Gwen? We've been to Calais. Actually, we went to oh, France, didn't we? we yeah. Did. We travelled for the Eurotunnel. It was a great time. Um, yeah. And because, of course, June is somebody who uh, had worked with the Eurotunnel uh, and a long standing, I think she retired through your tunnel. She was eligible for travel discount, mm -hmm. so which was which is great. Like all companies, you know, like you get uh, post office and stuff like that. You know, you, uh, certain companies will give you certain perks, won't they, for being a long standing member of staff? So, you know, we we went to the, to Europe, didn't we? And we had a great time in Bruges, and um, yeah, we we had some laughs and, and jokes while we did so. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, we walked um, quite a way. Um, at the time, I had a few issues um, going on with my um, ankles. Uh, thankfully, after physio, that um, that's no now no longer. Uh, I was in terrible pain that day. But we walked so so far. But the the shops, all the different different little chic shops, it's just amazing, amazing place. It's a shame that we can't have somewhere like that over here. Well, Grim, some would argue that because, of course, we do have wonderful history, don't we? I mean, that's one thing we can be proud about with the UK. We do have fantastic history, um, namely with our statues, to, to say the least, you know. Oh, we, yes, yes. We don't want to see our statues going anywhere, do we, Grim? No, it's part of our history. But that's my personal opinion. There you go, see? And it's always worth a weight in gold. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you for Matt. Matt is also with us. Matt has also been uh, a previous guest to the Ben and Graham show, and um, we've had some fantastic time with, with Matt also. He will, I'm sure, join us again for another Monday night show, uh, guest show, that is. Um, but in the, in the meantime, thank you for joining us, and thank you for coming along and you know if anybody in the in the chat has any views upon what they think about you know coronavirus whether they think or feel that we're going to get a second spike or whether they actually that that's just a little bit of more scaremongering and of course as long as we do the certain things necessary that's been given as advice from the government particularly that actually we should maybe avoid that second spike or second wave as it's been said and um, but what, what's others experiences i mean i would say certainly you know me and graham i mean we've had some recent experiences i think with the fact everything seems to be going quite somewhat back to normal to a normal state of busy um yes. yeah I, I think you know it's it's it, it is worrying a little bit i would say but actually in the, in the in the same breath it's also quite nice because i don't know about you graham but actually three months for me has been a long time um, out of normality and getting back to a normality now is although with you know like I said with the social distancing and the PPE it's great I can't be any more happier um, yeah so Matt says good evening gentlemen good evening to you Matt and uh, thanks for joining us um, good evening Matt thank you for joining us too yes it's yes thank you um, yeah Matt we will have, we'll love to have you back on and um, we are more than happy to have you uh, a little bit more than as like with with Andy, I mean Andy's been with us a few times, and uh, he's he's been great as well. You know, there's uh, it's great to get as many people on board on the Ben and Graham show because we want to hear lots of different uh, things uh, from various different people, and uh, that's the most important thing. You know, getting all these different ideas and views and and personalities on the show uh, for mm -hmm. your purpose, for your entertainment. Graham, have you found um, in particular with coronavirus? I mean, do you think um, it's 
changed the way you've had to work though in, in, in a sense or is it marginally the same for you particularly I mean you work in social care don't you no oh, yes I work in um, the mental health sector and um, it has um, uh, thrown a few um, uh, issues in, in, in the direction of the, the way the staff actually, actually do engage with the individuals that we support but we, it is still adequate enough that uh, that we are able to 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 produce the correct care package for for the individuals that we support and the equipment that the company have as i said earlier um have stocked up for us m more than what is needed um which is good it's always best to have more than, than what you actually need so we are pretty stocked up there's been a few issues with um, the interaction um, side of things, uh, with the social distancing, especially with mental health. They do require that more um, like um, personal sort of approach, which means that you do do become um, lesser than, than, than the two meter um, situation. But in work, we've actually increased the two meter distance, we've actually increased that um, by another couple of meters up to um, wherever we can increase it. We are taking it to the next level, basically, just to add extra protection for the individuals that we support. So. Well, absolutely, you have to, you have to. And um, guys, we are um, we're slightly over time with our guest, but that's not a problem. It's just a slight hiccup, but it's not a hiccup. I say hiccup. I mean, it is a hiccup, but it's not a hiccup. You know what I mean, Graham? Does that make sense? Well, yes. Well, well coming from you, yes, but not yeah. everyone yeah. Um, understands so, you about me. So basically, we have got our guest with us, but we haven't got our guest with us physically. We've got her with us, but not with you. Does that make sense, Graham? Lovely. Right. So uh, I'm it... just going to answer the call, guys. Um, Graham, I'm going to leave it over to you for a moment and I'll be back very, very shortly. OK, thank you. Hello, June. Hello. Houston, I believe we have an issue. I'm I'm finding it difficult to pick you up, um, June. If you could just hold hold the line um, momentarily, and um, as soon as the production team comes back, um, we will be able to hopefully get you back on board. So please hold the line, All right, everyone. I'm, I do apologise for the technical issue we have here, but. We are working on it and we will get it corrected as soon as we can. Shame I haven't got some like um, music to play and uh, could sing a song. How about that then? We are production teams uh, returned and we have an issue. I can't hear the caller production team. At all, whatsoever. So. Ah. <laughs> well, uh, guys, um, we're back. Uh, I say we're back. Uh, me and Graham are back. Um, yes, we have got an issue. We have got our good lady, um, June, with us. Um, she has been trying to contact me, but, of course, we need to get her the link, guys. So, um... June, if you're here, if you can hear us, uh, do have a look at your Facebook Messenger. Um, and above the last four comments we discussed, uh, you should see the link. And please click on that link and it should bring you straight to the waiting room, guys. Shouldn't it? I think. Graham, isn't that right? Hopefully. I, I hope. I hope for June's sake and everyone else's. Indeed. Or otherwise, June, there's another way we can do this live on air. Is if you was to kindly send me your email address... Uh, to my Facebook page, uh, I should then be able to also send you a direct link. But 
that link should be, as I say, in your Facebook Messenger. So if you are watching, mm -hmm. have a look in your Facebook Messenger. It should be just a few steps up from um, from our last three or four exchanges. So have a look at that. Um, Grim, what do you would what would you say, right, about weather? You know, when we talk about before June comes in, when we talk about weather, you know, do you think weather does have a, an effect on the virus? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so we they do believe, don't they, that um, it's um, like most viruses, uh, it's got uh, conditions that it copes well in and conditions that it does not cope well in with regards to temperature. Um, the virus seems to quite enjoy living on um, more more of a moist um, situation. Um, and that the temperature, if it's too cold, um, if someone can give us the, the grades of the temperature, um, I believe if it's too cold, the virus um, dies. It dies. It doesn't lay dormant. It dies. The only, the only way a virus, this virus that we're going through at the moment, this pan pandemic, is surviving um, when, when those certain temperatures have, have come is because it's body temperature. There's a, a carrier. So that's the reason why. But most viruses do die in the extreme cold and uh, extreme hot weather. I think the hottest, I think it's uh, 27, 28. I'm, I'm sure that's temperature, but the, the, the height temperature, the low temperature though, um, I'm not 100% sure on, but I probably would would deem it's got to be near or close to freezing, if not like minus two or something. So that's that. I'm hoping that soon we will be back on board with the show and get on to the whole point of Monday evening, which is the guest of the week. The guest of the week that is patiently waiting to come on board. I believe that everything was up and running and and ready to um, have her thrusted upon us all. But um, it doesn't seem to be the case, does it? But you've got me to look at. You got me to listen to. My green screen's gone a bit funny, isn't it? So I will try and keep you entertained. I did pop to see uh, June Murphy earlier on today to assist her with the downloading of the Zoom app. And I ran through the necessary procedures for her to contend with. I explained that Ben would be sending a link to uh, for her to select. I said, all you need to do is select on the link. But I believe there's been an issue with with um, something to do with her Wi-Fi. So I'm hoping that that's being dealt with now. So apologies. Uh, I believe we have some movement. Well, if you consider movement being me moving, well, I've not been moving very far, Gwen. Um, you know snails, right? They do move rather slowly, don't they? Yes, they do. Very um, slowly. Well, I'm moving slower than that, all right? So what we will say, of course, is we do have June. I have spoken with June, and June is trying her very, very most hardest mm -hmm. to get in. And I've explained to her what she needs to do. So she's just having a look at that at the moment. She is on board with us. She is almost with us, guys. So, of course, thank you for bearing with us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very good, mate. Matt says very good. Um, I'm glad you're very good, mate. I'm. Uh, me and Matt, actually, just... Uh, divulge off of the topic we worked recently together and it was a great few shifts um very busy as well uh, but no we are going to be with june very very shortly and it's going to be a great time uh, i can assure you we're gonna have some good fun grem won't you agree with that you have to agree with it and who couldn't possibly agree with that i believe no one can disagree with it no one can disagree with that can they no i believe that good night it's a shame that we are nearly 14 minutes behind of schedule. <laughs> but we're having some fun. We're having some chit-chat. We're doing what Ben and Graham does. 
we enlighten your excitement factor. If you can enlighten your excitement. <laughs> I think I think we're gonna have to rename Grim Wordsworth. What do you reckon, Grim? Well, I must be joking, Wordsworth, no. Yeah. No. Enlighten your excitement. What a word or two. Grim, but... Grim, the word the word word. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, I see. Well, look, our production team have actually sent um, June another link uh, for the same link previously, but we've we've put it directly, the very last thing that was sent. So I'm hoping any second now, guys, we'll have a little ping pong and um, that will be her in the waiting room. So that would be great. If we can get her in, that would be absolutely fantastic, guys. Um, and if those of you know June, please come on to the chat and have a chat with her. Um, uh, she'll be more than happy to speak to you. And, um, you know, take part because she has lots of things to say. Brilliant stuff, Graham, wouldn't you agree? She has a lot of information about not just Dover, because she's a, a very hard, passionate Dovorian, but, but somebody who, as I say, has worked with a number of different industries in the in the area so she's she's very well known and uh, i mm. think um Graham, she's she's going to bring a massive highlight to the show tonight wouldn't you say i believe so too yeah i believe that she's got a, a vast of experience um in in so many different areas so i believe we're in for hopefully quite a blinding night ratings through the roof right. viewing things you know Okay, yeah, so, it. yep, so, um, yeah, Graham, she, uh, this good lady of ours, is having a lot of difficulties with Zoom, sadly. Uh, she's not able to uh, join f uh, through the link. But there is another way we can do this, Graham, isn't there? Uh, because uh, even if it's by voice, I mean, we want to get her on the show, guys. I mean, this is huge. Yes, voice, it's fine. I gave her the other option of voice, um, a telephone call. Um, I asked that if we do have any issues with Zoom, that the uh, the other option is to make it a phone call um, via um, condenser mic. And... Yes, we can do. Well, the other thing is, Graham, if we get June in, okay, even if by audio uh, for the moment, I yeah. can actually then instruct her in how to... Um, mm -hmm. Oh, is there any other way I can do it? Yeah, I suppose there is another way I could do it. I suppose I can send uh, an email. Yeah, I could do that. Through, but... Her, but through the library, the, the, um, the Ben and Graham library that we have, um, we do have um, a Photoshop of june maybe we can um place it up somehow if not now we might we well we will definitely edit it on for you guys for the um edited broadcasted version which will come out in a few days time right on youtube right. tell us a little bit more about that graham the edited version Indeed. is where yes it's where we basically um, spend um, quite a bit of time in discussing each scene. Um, if, if we need to edit certain certain areas of it that, to enhance the quality, not in just the sound, but in, in the visual experience. Because even though you are seeing us live via um, Facebook, we we can we can do we can do this. I believe we got some movement, guys. Some movement. Well, movement. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm not doing the Hussein Bolt thing at the moment, of course. Um, movement, not quite so much. Um, but I, but I will say that we are moving, um, moving into nowhere, <laughs> moving into the abyss. But no, we are getting there. We are getting there. And of course, you know, we are literally a few buttons away from June entering the the Ben and Grem show void. Graham. Um, but uh, Graham, you you need to check something, please, if you can, uh, on your PDA. It's not really a PDA, is it? Let's just say mobile, shall we? Uh, if you have a look on that, mate, uh, have a look, because while we while you do that, I'm going to speak to the viewers about. Um, just had you there. I'm going to speak to viewers about next week's show. Now, next week's show is the Monday Night Guest Show, and also we'll have the Sunday Night Guest. Uh, guys, what would you like to see in the Monday Night Guest? I mean, when we say about what would you like to see, how would you like to see it? I mean, would you like us to put questions to the guests, or was there, would you like more of a game show, or is there anything in particular that you would see as being really beneficial to the, to the show itself, uh, to the Ben Graham show? So is there something that you particularly feel that you would like to see? Uh, Graham, um, how's it going on your side? Or not? 
not quite anywhere at the moment. I'm just, just still trying to sort that. Okay, okay, not a problem. Um, well, Graham, can you just talk to me about um, what happened today for you particularly? I mean, you know, so did you see a lot of people out? You work on an ice cream van, don't you? So did you find there was a lot of people out today, given the fact of coronavirus and everything else? Did you find that people are purchasing ice cream at least? What would you say? All right, yes, guys, um, I, I do um, do some ice cream van work. I do pull um, a good whippy. Yes, um, quite popular, quite award-winning pulling of the whippy. Uh, but I, I also work in mental health. That's why I'm a bit crazy, so <laughs> like all the time. I have to keep busy. I love keeping busy. I love helping people. So, right. That's great. Right. Well, we're just phoning June, guys. We should have June in any second. Hi, June, is that you? No, no, that's okay. Um, so we've got June on, everybody. Um, she's not coming through very loud on my phone, so uh, I'm not sure. No, place it closer to the condenser How about, mic. Uh, um, no, that's okay, June. I mean, like I say, it, these things happen, doesn't it? I mean, but you want to see if you look, if you see some of the stuff that we've done recently in our last show, you'll see that we've had a number of different problems as time's gone on. So uh, I wouldn't worry yeah, too much. Teething problems. Teething problems, yeah, basically. Um, yeah. Te teething problems without the teething gel, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, we do have June in with us. We have her in uh, on audio. Um, sadly, we haven't got her on video at the moment, but that's not a problem because we've still got her in general. So that's great. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to see me anyway, Ben. Well, I wouldn't be so sure of that. Uh, no, you're, you're fantastic. No, but no, honestly, we, we've got a few things we want to talk about actually today. And um, we wanted to talk to you about particularly, June, your, your involvement with, you know, the Dover Express and, and not so much... Oh, the good old days. That's it. Oh. The, the good old days and not just that but also you know about so, certainly for those that want to maybe get involved with not just journalism but also working with a, such a community group like like the papers you know so how yeah. how what would you advise people generally in that you know in, in, in getting involved in journalism or even if it's just getting involved um writing articles i mean what, obviously what's your personal take on that it's a lovely world, journalism. I, I went into it by accident. My cousin, who was 81, had lived in the same house for 81 years. He was born in it, and he actually died in it. And I wanted to do a story for the good old Dover Express. So I wrote him a letter, and the editor actually said, can you meet me at my cousin's house? And we were talking about Tower Hamlets, and Phil just said, why don't you do a column if you know Tower Hamlets so well and everything that goes on? And it went on for a few years, and uh, I absolutely loved it. I loved the camaraderie, camaraderie the, the laughs we had, the stories. I'd recommend it to anyone that's interested. Go for it. Brilliant. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think there's a lot of people, I think, probably that do want to do it, certainly, and but maybe not sure how they go about doing it. But like you, I mean, obviously, if you're passionate about something or you know something about a particular topic or subject, then actually it works, doesn't it? You know, and that people... you can do it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. Mine was looking on the bright side, laughing, taking the mickey out of people and, and people did like it. I remember actually, uh, June, um, there was a little bit about uh, myself, I remember reading once, about uh, Ben, I think it was double glazing, wasn't it? Or double... double glazer. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that was right. <laughs> I, I, whoever it was, it was brilliant. I have to be honest, I loved it. But that's it, isn't it? It's, it's good fun. I mean, you've got to have a laugh, haven't you? It is good fun. And when you get together with the journalists and have a laugh, I mean, you, you know, you can't beat it. No. No, so absolutely, absolutely You get not. in touch with the editor or, I mean, newspapers, let's face it, that they're dying out now. How many people buy, news, buy newspapers? It's all online. But if you want to do no. it, you can go for it. You've just got to want it. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you want it, you've got to go and get it, haven't you? You've got to take it with both hands, take the opportunity, strike the iron while it's hot and all of that. But um... Yeah, I was lucky it fell into my lap at the right time. I'd retired and thought I was going to get me knitting out and me slippers on. 
<laughs> and I got into it a hundred percent and loved every minute. Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm sure others can agree with us. Is that, that you know it was a pleasure to pick up the Dover Express and to read your your columns because they were a People great. People still say it. Yeah, no, I, no I'm sure they brilliant. do. I they absolutely do miss it, honestly. Um, and, and, and I got a commendation for um, East Kent. Did you? Columnist wow. of the year, I've got it framed. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, maybe when we can get you on the show on a on a on a video show, maybe we can uh, have a look at that. You know, as a as a, a collective, we'll uh, yeah. we'll show that, and um, that'd be brilliant. But um, we do have a few. Uh, yeah, extra... I love showing off. No, no, it's important. Well, if you if you if you're somebody that's earned it, you should do it, shouldn't you? You should always show off. You Bless know. you. You know Bless what I mean? You. Yeah. It's, it's, isn't that true? You know, if you've worked hard, why shouldn't you show off? Absolutely. Oh, um, I'm one to crow at every opportunity. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I hold my hands up when I'm wrong as well. Equally, that's the secret. Yes, well, that's true. Yeah, you have to do that, don't you? I mean, but yeah. not too often, mind you, but we we do at times, don't we? we <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very often wrong, but I have been known. Yeah. Ask my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that could be, well, um, that could be a little bit biased, couldn't it, if it's family, I suppose. But no, I understand. I understand what you mean. We've got a number of people in June, actually. We've got, we've got a few people in today. Um, so we've got um, uh, Lee Turner. We've got Lisa Terry. You might know Lisa Terry, do you, June? Do you remember Lisa Terry? She used to be involved with... Um, forums, I believe, and also she uh, was involved with the Buckland. It wasn't Buckland, was it, Graham? It was the Coombe Valley. Some wasn't Radigans. It? Some Radigans. Radigans. Yeah, she, you might you might know Lisa. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure I do. Yeah, you might have come across her. But you know, not yeah. just not just that. Um, uh, before I pass you over to Graham, I want to just sort of say actually about um, your past involvement with Eurotunnel because it's a fantastic company to work for, as I know myself. You know, and I'm train crew, the best in the world. Yes. Yeah. Well, they are great, aren't they? Absolutely. What a bunch. I still get in touch with them. We meet up, and it was a brilliant career. I, every 10 years, every second was brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. And they are. They are such a big family, aren't they? Such a, a friendly organisation. It is a family. It and is. your vote on the world a good employer. Yes, absolutely they are. And, mm -hmm. I, of course, many of you will know that I'm not directly employed, or maybe yourself, Jim, will know that I'm not directly employed with Eurotunnel, but I work alongside Eurotunnel uh, for, for one I of the contractors. I know you do. But, I know. But you know what? I mean, you know, as much as I love the company I work for, I, I also really do enjoy working with Eurotunnel and of course you know maybe one day you never know there could be an opportunity but no honestly you you know it was great to find June that you worked with with Eurotunnel because there's still a lot of people now that I speak to within Eurotunnel that know you and, and speak very highly of you which is great. <laughs> Would you remember that trip we did when I won't say his name but Bandit was in the sentence and I said mention it yes. to him. Yes I, and, I, and I did that very thing you know and, and obviously he's not watching the stream right now. He's not watching the show. But if he was, he'd probably be chuckling. I would say, <laughs> I, I remember, do you know, I don't know if I told you the story to that, but I, I was raring to, I was, I was sort of getting ready to say something. And I thought, I don't know if I can, you know, because he's quite, you know, he's quite high up within the chain of Eurotunnel, you know. I, I know he is, but just blame me. I can take it. You know, he'd know where it came from anyway. I love him dearly. Yes. No, honestly, he, he absolutely, um, he absolutely laughed about it. And, and I, I think what made it easier for me, I think, to say it was to, to mention your name in, in the process of saying it, because it kind of, it took the pressure off a little bit. But no, he, he, he thought it was hilarious. He did chuckle and he asked how you well, were doing. That's, he, well, he was sense of humour. We were known for our sense of humour. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. And, and even still now, there's still a, a, a huge coming together there. And, um, you know, they're doing great, especially at the moment, you know, with the, with the coronavirus and everything. They're, they're really on top of it, you know. I um, still know a few of them, my mates at work up there. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Wow. Mm. Well, obviously, once we get you on again, um, uh, you know, on the, on the video, We'll, we'll talk a bit more about that. But Graham, um, Graham, you wanted to speak to June, didn't you? You had a few things to talk about with June, did you not? Oh, yes, yes. Um, our production team has been quite busy, June. Um, um, we've had a, a little bit of a look into um, uh, your, some past histories. And uh, we, we came across um, a situation that you were entwining in Nice, in French Riviera City. Um, where you basically became the heroine of the day. Um, you assisted um, some some children and um, and comforted them, um, counselled them, and kept them safe. 
we'll be able to elaborate more. I don't know if you picked I, up on that. I got the bit about Nice. It was four years ago this year, 2016. Bastille Day, July the 14th. Yeah, I was there when it all kicked off. And when we got back to the hotel that was full of students, I took five of them in because they were in shock at what they'd seen. And two of them were Swedish, Norwegian, German, and a Chinese girl. And I made them cups of tea. I said, that's what the English do. And I actually said the English won the war against the Germans making tea. And the German lad, Niels, cracked up. And it broke the ice. We looked after them all night. You know, we were sitting around the bed talking. It was a horrible experience for them kids. I, I was okay, you know. Well, that's I will it. never forget them. No, I mean, I remember Graham, as you'll do, and it, what a question to, to June as well. I mean, yes, yes, I remember June, wasn't it? It was in the paper. You were you were um, pointed out about just how, with the, you know, heroism, which you, you know, you involved yourself with, you know, in the situation. Well, I weren't really, because I, I just thought of the kids. I just thought, get those kids out, get them up in our room. I said to their teachers, I'll have these five, you look after the others. So, no, it wasn't a heroin, a heroin. It was a caring, motherly thing to do. Look after the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. But um, certainly, yes. I mean, to, to put your, I mean, let's just say, for example, in that situation, you would have been, I'm sure, like many at the time, would have been fearful of what was going on. I mean, it was it was quite scary, wasn't it? The whole thing. And well, because it had been an excellent day, we saw the parades along the promenade des Anglais, the bands, you know, the, the the old songs, Long Way to Tipperary, brilliant day. And then in the evening, it all kicked off and it was a totally different scenario. The chaos and panic mm -hmm. and kids' trainers and push chairs left. And one of the young students, they were 17, he said to me, I ran past the table outside the hotel and I grabbed a, a bottle of wine and sat in the corner because I thought if I'm going to die, I want to die drunk, you know, bless him. <laughs> but you don't forget that. No. Well, June, um, one or two of the members of the um, the stream have, have actually said, so what happened exactly? So obviously we, we know uh, what happened. So it was around about the time, wasn't it, where we had certain... Uh, attacks, wasn't it, in certain numbers of countries? I think it was, a, wasn't it Tunisia? Yeah, but this was a local guy. I actually did a profile on him with my friend. I said, I bet he, he was down watching the parades all day, went home with a grudge, and something flipped, and he got in his van and did that. But the police made sure he didn't get out. Fair play to the cops. They were brilliant. Yeah. So it was actually a local guy, probably not all there. He was a loner, the neighbours said. It, so I don't think it was terrorist-related. It was some nutter. Yeah, but that's all it needs but to it be But he killed 80-odd people and put over 200 in hospital. Yeah. That's how bad it was. Yeah, it was quite significant, wasn't it? I remember. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, you know, a lot of people were worried for you because, I mean, obviously it was in the paper, wasn't it? And um, everybody... I know. My son phoned me at half seven the next morning and I was still up. He said, Mum, I've just seen the news. And I said, no, I'm fine, mate. And I joked about it. I said, well, you know, when I go on holiday, something always happens. I said, when I was in Italy one year, the Dolomites flooded, you know, <laughs> and just made a joke of it because they were worried. Yeah. But nothing to worry about. Good. Well, that's that's a happy ending mm. to a, an awkward situation, isn't it? Really. But yeah, I think yes. in any situation, you know, you go about these places and you you know holiday or travel, and you don't you never expect. It's like the saying goes, isn't it? You never expect it to happen to you, do you? Or you never. You don't know what you'll do until it happens. Yes. You haven't got a clue. It happens, and then you sink on your feet. Yeah. But the locals, everything was deadly quiet the next day. Yeah. And then the day after. The locals were saying, "What well, life goes on, it's happened now. And the news vans came from all over the world. I was on Canadian TV and that, you know. Mm. And then after a day or two, I said to my friend, we would bugger off and go to Italy for the day to get out of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we did.
Yeah, just like that. I mean, I, I, I mean, the, the, the nearest thing to something similar, but not quite the same in any means, is was when I went to Brussels. I went to Brussels. Um, it was uh, quite a few, well, a couple of Christmases or so ago, I think it was. It might have been about three Christmases ago now. Uh, and I went to the yeah. European Parliament, and it was around about the time. And I went with a lady called Georgette, which you'll know very well. Um, Oh, I know Georgette, yeah. Yeah, fantastic lady. And, and we went together and we were part of the party at the time um, uh, that we were actually part of. And um, whilst at the European uh, Union, we on the way there with the, with the team that we had, uh, we were walking past uh, static tanks, um, you, know, you know, tanks in the street. Yeah. And it was so surreal to actually see that, you know. Um, and this was yeah. around about the time where things were a little bit, I mean, there was a bit of unrest. Uh, and I, Yeah. You know, but, you know, that's about as close, and thankfully, I should say, and I hope nobody has to ever go through it, but um, that was about as close as I ever came to anything out of the normal, if you like. Um, yeah, so... because it's different to England. Mm. The French cops, the Italian cops, they're, they're on it, they've got their guns, and you feel safe, you think they're going to do it. Yeah. Our police haven't got the power. No, no. That they have. If there's riots, they're there dispersing them. <laughs> and they've got the manpower and the police have got powers. And that's what I'd like to see here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, this is it. And I think, you know, there will come a day, I suppose, won't they be, um, where that will that will be a thing. Um, but I hope so. But there's one thing, um, and it wasn't necessarily a, co a conversation that we wanted to direct at you in particular, Jim, but just on the subject of when we talk about policing, um, we are, in particular at the moment, uh, aware of a movement uh, which has been going about in the last few weeks. And um, we're not going to talk about the politics of that, certainly, but what I wanted to say was, with that, is that there has been um, an attempt or, or an effort, if you like, to demonetize the police. Now, that is a bit yeah. of a topic in itself. I mean, of course, you know, yeah. there'll be many a different... Disgraceful. Mm. I, think, I think I would probably have to agree with you there. Um, I think it is mm. in the sense that, well, they are our front line. And of course, you know, with that said, the individuals that are suggesting this are the very individuals that are saying about demonetizing them, uh, but, but actually want them available for their protection. But it, it sort of doesn't go hand in hand together. Uh, you know, so... Well, in uniform and see how they like dealing with mobs. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is it, isn't it? And and so now it's a bit of a touchy. You know, our police must be demoralised. We should support our police. Yes. yes. You know, and rely on them and give them the praise because their hands are tied. Yes, they are. They are, and absolutely. June, I mean, I, I, I stand with you 110%. I'm sure the viewers do too. I mean, we have to protect the police force. They are our frontline service and, and um, you know, they do need more powers and they need the, the financial availability. Yeah, these to... people that criticise them, let them have a go at sorting it out and see what sort of job they do. Exactly, exactly. It's all right talking and moaning and whinging. Actions speak louder than words. Don't they just? I couldn't agree, disagree with you at all there. Mm. Um, no, so Lee, Lee said he remembers the times where we had, you know, the IRA, sadly, and there was a lot going on then. Um, oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Graham, what, what do you know anything about that at all? Do you remember that? I mean, we're about the same age, aren't we? So uh, you would know yourself, wouldn't you, about the, the, the devastation that was around that? Um, and, and, yeah, and London and London and that, you know, everywhere. But all throughout history, something's happened. There's some threat somewhere. And mankind, most of us will survive. Some won't. It's just something happens, then it's over, something else to crop up. Indeed, indeed. And that's it, and that's the way it seems to be, isn't it? You know, so we sort of... Well, look at the French Revolution, for one example. You know, the... Uh, uh, you could name them all throughout history. Yeah. The Black Death, you know, the yeah. plagues. That's it. It's Mother Nature having a go at us. It is. It has its moments, doesn't and it? And we never learn. No. Mm. No, we no, we should learn, shouldn't we? But we never do. I agree with you, you know. But Some I think... of us do learn and we tolerate things and understand that kids can go a bit off the rails and they're confused and worried, especially with this virus. Yes. It must be awful for kids and little ones that don't understand. Indeed. And the others are rebelling because kids rebel. They do. They do. And, and you know, some... they need a shoulder to cry on and support and understanding a lot of them. And the ones that are evil, fucking lock them up. Exactly. Get them off. Exactly. Get them off the street. 
Exactly. Well, but, that you would, hopefully by doing that, they won't do it again. And that's that's the whole point of the discipline, isn't it? That of which we seem you to. You can help some people, Ben, but some people don't want to be helped. No, I think you couldn't have said any better, actually, June. Oh, well, Lisa oh. Terry agrees with you. She says, um, "Well said, June." Um, so, of course, Lee brought up about the IRA, and of course, uh, what else have we got here, Graham? We have. Uh, oh well, I mean, Lisa says, "Get the army on the streets." Now, I suppose yes. <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's... That wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be, but that is... That's Ooh. going to a level, isn't it? I mean, we would hope... Well, we let would... them all stand together and fight together and stamp all this, these problems out. Yeah, yeah. Well, we do... Probably I do think won't so. happen, but it's nice to think it would. Yeah. Well, it, it, we definitely need, need to in certain situations, doesn't it? You know, do, don't we? I mean... Well, I don't like racists. No. I hate... Well, I've got friends that are Muslims, Portuguese, yes. Italian, French, and they're, they're dear to me because they're nice people. Exactly. You can't say, oh, I don't like the Germans or whatever because cause of the war. The Germans are lovely. I went to Germany last year. Yeah. And most people are like us, Ben. Of course they are. We, we've got our families. We've got our lives. We want to lead a nice life. We don't give a shit what, what nationality people are or yes. colour. Yeah, and you know what, June? I mean, actually, you touch on something very, very dear to me as well. I and mean, we will talk about the, the Black Lives Matter campaign. And as much as a lot of people that are very supportive of it are doing it for very uh -huh. sensitive and, and real reasons, uh, I do, yeah. me personally, I do fear um segregation and i and i say that and i what i mean by that is that you know i like you um i don't see color i don't understand no i don't you know no. and i think the reason why i say this is because simply i'm i've been born of a year or lifestyle of of or born into should i say of of modern day you know multiculturalism and i i understand as a country that we are yeah. all together we all work together um and so i've, I've never understood I, I don't particularly understand really what's going on at the moment. I, I don't, I mean, I, some would say it's political, others would say there's another agenda involved, but I personally just feel it's a real shame because I think we've made leaps and bounds, uh, haven't we, Graham, in, in how we've, you know, gone forward in the past. It's a few people, Ben, that stir other people up and yeah. it turns into a form of mass hysteria. Indeed, yeah. I have but to agree. Some people are easily led and some people. Uh, say like me no I don't agree with that yeah yeah you know black lives matter white lives matter but if a black man or a white man committed a crime especially a horrible crime they should be punished absolutely and that should there should be no uh, uh, um, yeah and equality works in, in both areas doesn't it you know of course it justice does. has to be yeah. seen exactly and I, I don't understand it I don't understand it really myself but you know I, I hope certainly that you know we can move on as a country as a, as a world really as a global We've got a hope that most of us think like us and yeah. want a decent life. We embrace other nice people, ignore the ones that we don't like. Yeah, yeah. You know. That's it. And a hope for the best. Yeah, exactly. But obviously not bring ill to them or bad feeling to them because at the end of the day, that's not what we want to do. You know, if you don't get on with somebody, ultimately, as you say, June, you just don't yeah, talk to them. Yeah, but I think most people think like us. You know, we're yeah. not racist it's no. awful I, I hate racism yeah i know and it, it, i think what i get to straight about myself also with it is i'm sure the viewers agree is just like i say how much is being spoken about at the moment and yet none of us really understand where it's come from i mean because we're all very tall well, people jump on the bandwagon then they see it they on do. bloody facebook or wherever and they join in and have their say and then it gets out of hand yes well why don't they do something useful like go and tidy their fucking rooms or sweep the garden up or you know what i mean yeah yeah of course um graham's nodding uh, refusely he's he's um <laughs> oh he, bless him he's, he's in full agreement <laughs> with you <laughs> um graham <laughs> What do you what do you have to say we on, on the matter? Script a bit like, haven't we? So we I'm we have yes, like, June. Um, I was going to say actually, um, we have gone slightly off script, and um, and Graham is just pulling me in a little bit because obviously <laughs> I know we had a slight little hiccup here and there. Um, I, I do I do lead people astray quite easily. Well, you don't need to. Honestly, I can do that myself. <laughs> I can do that on my own. <laughs> oh bless. Yeah. Um, just to say, uh, Robin is in the chat. He has said, uh, he said, uh, the stuff like the Facebook and Instagram um, algorithms promoting emotionally shocking videos. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just saying about Facebook, you know, about how people have reacted. And it's what you said, June, you know, about how people are 
bringing anger to... A lot of people are sheep, aren't they? They follow. They don't stand up and say, no, I don't agree with that. They jump on the bandwagon because I think it's the in thing to do. But this is it. And, 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 you know, this is what I worry of. I think many of us do. You know, I say, I say moderate thinkers. I mean, you know, us general folk i think we do worry of of just how people can be led in such a way you know and and we're still in the majority ben yeah we are still in the majority of course we are of course we are and I, and that's what i always tell myself you know because if you don't you go mad i think but well, you bring your kids up to be polite at respect oh, yeah. and that's all you can do and love them and be there for them absolutely absolutely um, Graham, what, did you want to say something? You were saying Graham was itching to say something, then, guys. Oh well, if I if I can actually have a, a word in edgeways, yes, that would be quite nice, Ben. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure that really, go, I'm going to enjoy this um, editing that's uh, um, going to come from this. Um, Joan, I'm, I'm amazed at what you've had to put um, put yourself through, and I know you don't believe that you are a heroin but um I, I will always think that of you for what you've done and uh, and the assistance you gave those children um i appreciate that and it's it's humanity at its best i i i and i, and I thank you i mean the anxieties that you must have witnessed the 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 sadness and 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 the terror in people's eyes Mm -hmm. and can I just say a funny story about a Swedish lad? Yes, uh, I believe so, as long yeah, as it's... Um... When he got onto the bed in my room, he had his hands, head in his hands, and he was saying, it's busted, it's busted. And I said, well, what's busted, Alex? And he said, the, the, the person that did that is busted. And I said, no, you mean bastard. I said, say it after me. He's a bastard. <laughs> and do you know what? When I got back, they all went back to school, didn't they, in Sweden and all that. And I got an email, or my daughter did, because I don't email. And he said, tell June, I can't wait to tell my English teacher that I can say bastard correctly. And that is true. He will still remember that. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love him. Well, this mm, is, yeah, is brilliant. That's it. I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes certain words are needed to be said, aren't they? You know, in certain situations. Well, he took his mind off of it. He went from sort of crying to sort of laughing, you know, and me saying, I say it again, he's a bastard. And we all ended up like, whoa. From being frightened, we ended up having a laugh and about six cups of tea and packets of biscuits. But... It all ended well. Well, no, it sounds really good. Yeah, it, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. And this is the thing. I mean, when people are in a, a state of panic, if you could say, you know, it's when somebody like yourself comes along and, and calm, collective, and, and reassuring, I suppose, that's that helps many people, doesn't it? And that's that's what they needed. The first thing I did, phone your parents, tell them you're all right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that would it have been was a nice experience. I know it was awful, but it warms my heart to think of those kids, you know. Yeah, and that's it, and that's just it, isn't it? It's doing the right thing by the moment, isn't it? And it's hard sometimes yeah. when, it, when a situation happens and you don't know what necessarily to do. It's one of those things where you, you live by that very moment, you know, to do that. It brings out the best in people and it brings out the worst in people, I think. Yeah, you know, yes. I, I might have run and panicked with everyone else, but I, I actually didn't. No, and that's what you've got to be... And that's why people are so proud of you as well. And, and that's how I think... Oh, well, bless you. Isn't that the case? I mean, you know, people will be like that, won't they? Thinking that, you know, that is definitely the way to go about things. You know, reassurance, yeah. calm, you know, let's let's take a breath and, and uh, assess the situation. Yeah. But of course, yeah, it's scary. I mean, I, I, I know myself, you know, in a situation where at work, you know, without going into too much detail, of course, I mean, there's been situations that have come about where, you know, you you do worry because it's a serious situation that you might be in and you have to take a breath, take a step back, think about what you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, and that does take a, a certain person and you're right, it does bring the best and the worst out in people. Um, but but uh, Ben, in a split second, you could die. You could be yeah. crossing the road and get hit by a bus and you're gone. Exactly, exactly. Or if you're lucky, you don't. You live to, you know, laugh another day, hopefully. Exactly. When your time's up, it's up. 
uh, yeah, and that's it, isn't it? So you you know you're mm. just going to take every moment as it comes and with the best way possible. Carpe diem, as they say, and go seize the day. Yes. Ma- make it good. Exactly. Mm. Well, Graham, I, I'm going to pass you back to Graham because Graham was halfway through something and he wanted to say something else. He's itching to get I've got, over to I've, you. I've got to it. I'm, I mentioned what I was going to say. Yeah, I mentioned uh, I've got nothing else to add to that. Just that I'm I'm amazed at what you've done, and and I'm and I I'm pretty speechless as well. Um, as I said, humanity at its best. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. Well, there you go. So, Graham. <laughs> Yeah, but they'll be doing the same as you, in a sense. I mean, they'll be talking to people about it. It's an experience that will never leave them, isn't it, really? I mean, it's... Yeah, that's right. They Ooh. won't, yeah. yeah. But, you know, on a school trip, or we're going down the Tunis, you know, looking forward, having a nice time. And... But, yeah. Yeah. Shit happens. It does, it does. But, no, we've had some laughs, haven't we? Me, you and uh, Graham, and, and we need to, don't we? Need to go... Uh, well, we will do in the future. Absolutely. We have to. We have to do yeah. it. It was great. And I haven't seen much of George yet myself. Um, Graham, I'm, I'm sure. Um, have you seen George yet at all? I mean, uh, she's out and about. Oh, yeah, well, I saw her, I saw her the other day. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably see her tomorrow because you can get a takeaway coffee now. Yes. In the car, is yes, you, you know. And we go and find a bench. And social distance, we drink our coffee and um, have a chat. Right, well, look, that, there you go. We'll do that. We'll do that, Grim. We'll do that. I'll yeah. give her your love. Yeah, you'll get her on next time. She'll probably know what to do, how to set it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, you, you <laughs> both together might know a bit more about how to do this than me and Grim. And we've had nothing but troubles over the last few weeks. But we seem to be getting there. You know, it, it is coming together. Um, which I'm is sure you will. It's a good idea. It's good fun. But it's... me and Georgette, we'd be the gruesome twosome. You would, and do you know what? That's it. Well, you've just you've talked yourself into it now, June. You and Georgette have to come on on the Ben and Graham show. It's got to be done. Will do. Um, well, it's been a huge pleasure, um, uh, hasn't it, Graham? To have June? Yes, it has. Um, thank you it's so nice much. talking to you, mm-hmm. and you've made me feel very proud of yourself, myself. I'm used to getting moaned at by people and told off. Oh, you've only got to be endorsed for that. Me yeah. Think, yeah, mm. I was good that day. <laughs> No, you were, and um, no. But as I say, it's. I think sometimes when you're an individual, I think you don't necessarily believe, or let's just say, how do I word this? It's more like you don't necessarily believe or understand just how much people think of you so dearly because you are you're yourself. But actually, on the outside, you know what I mean. You don't. You well, don't I'm know. I'm a mouthy cow, and I let's face it, you know. But I, I think praise loudly, criticise quietly. Yes. That, that works, don't it? Yeah. Well, actually, it does. Actually, if everyone went by that motto, I think everyone would get on just just fine, wouldn't they? They would. Yeah, yeah. They would. But yeah, no, it's been a... concentrate on the good rather than the bad. It, well, exactly, exactly. You know, and you know, there's no point in falling out of anybody because, um, well, at the end of the day, all that does is cause gossip, doesn't it? And when you, which you don't need. Well, of course it does. Yeah. 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 It just feeds it. You know. What? Just ignore it if you don't like it and it'll go away. Absolutely, absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. But no, we will meet up, we'll have a coffee and we will certainly travel across to Europe when the lockdown relieves, I'm sure, very soon, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, definitely. Bum bandit telling, yes, I am still alive. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint him. I will certainly pass on the message, yes. I did see him. <laughs> I have seen him recently, yes. Um, I, you know, I mean, when you're so busy, you don't sometimes get the opportunity to chat, do you? But I have seen him out and about. He's a lovely guy. He's brilliant. Yeah. He, is a, he is a lovely guy. And um, do you know what? Yeah. He's that lovely. I'll just give you a, a, something he's done recently, actually. It's just before the lockdown occurred, uh, I was at work and um, we were talking about boots. There's one particular chap who has who basically had some safety boots that were falling off his feet. And he yeah. he got talking. We got talking. And I said, <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. If you have a web with... Um, you know who I'm talking about. I won't say the gentleman's name, but you, if you have a word with him, I said uh, he might just be able to sort something out for you. And he said, "What do you need? What do you need?" He went, and this is how much of a nice guy the bloke is. And he and he, he actually offered the lad at work a new pair of Eurotunnel boots. And do you know what? Oh, with I, a steel toe cap. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And I I thought you jammy so and so, and I wanted some of them, you know. But I, you know. But anyway, this lad got these boots, and he was made up. You know, I thought what a what a gentleman because. 
you know, we not. They were good, yeah. Yeah, weren't they just? So I, I don't know if you're still wearing mm. them, but um, so yeah, he, he got a good one from uh, from the, from the man in question, and yeah, he is a he's a lovely guy, and I'm glad. He's a star. He is, and and you know what? It's it's like you know, June, isn't it the case that you know you see these people that are stars that are working team working people who make make yeah. the opportunities available to them to get to these certain positions and they deserve every second of it and you don't always get the right management but when you get the right management no. it's nice if you get the right one you can respect them and i do respect a lot of people still there and yeah. love them dearly yes well um no i've as i say a, few, a lot many people there even currently have, have, have mentioned you and, and speak very highly of you so i will say hello to them for you again <laughs> most definitely and um but in the meantime like i say have a lovely evening june and and get, yeah. Oh, thank you. Sorry to cock up all the thing in the beginning. I was pressing that bloody Zoom button and swearing at it. But here we are. We've done it. Well, you did well because, like I say, um, we, we still managed to get you on. And, and if, you know, it'd be more disappointing <laughs> if we hadn't spoke to you at all. But no, uh, ne next time it will work perfectly. And in fact, next time maybe we'll get Georgette as well. That, that's a great idea, isn't it? it? It's my pleasure as well, darling. You take care. Brilliant. Thank you, June. Bye-bye. See you soon. Brilliant. Bye then. Bye, Bye now. Love. Bye, Bye, love. Well then, guys, that's um, June Murphy, everybody. That was June Murphy. Um, we, we did manage to get June on, Gwen, didn't we, in the end, somehow? Yeah, thankfully, uh, it went um, reasonably well. Yeah. It, well, it certainly did. And, and like I say, for those of you that do know June, she is lovely and um, she's got so many st uh, great stories to tell. And there you go. So there's a little bit about June Murphy. We will get June on. Uh, we will get June on in the future. Um, hopefully by video so we'll have to we'll look into that but uh but like i say in the meantime um it was a pleasure to get her on graham wasn't it it most certainly was and such a lovely lady um i'm really pleased that we've managed to get the voice call at least so indeed <laughs> um robin uh he also came in graham uh, on the show um nice to see you robin and uh Hi, robin yeah, and we've had uh, a few people in this evening. Thank you very much to everybody, everybody that's come on and uh, watched the Ben and Graham show. And we are very, very sorry, as I said, Graham, earlier, weren't we, about how Monday night is happening, yet Sunday night last evening didn't happen. And, of course, sadly, you know, situations like work and other, other things, other factors come into play. And there will be times where we can't, maybe, I hope not too many occasions, but there will be occasions where we won't be able to hold a show at all. But that will be very, mm -hmm. very... Um, very very sad and, and um we'll try our hardest to, for that not to happen but of course we want as many people on board uh, on the show as possible so if any of you in the chat want to come on on a monday night stream please get in touch with us and uh, we'll have it arranged it'll be a great time it'll be good fun wouldn't it Graham? yes most certainly yes just drop us a line um message on on either of our uh, social network sites and we will endeavor to get back to you all and we will arrange something we do have a few things in the pipeline that are still in at, at the um, very, very early production stage to do with a game show and the, the process of that and the amount of contestants within within it as well. But for that to happen, we would need a premises. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We are, we are getting there. And it's all in the pipeline, Graham, isn't it? Like all these things, they're building blocks, aren't they? They are building blocks and we're, we're getting there. Um, but no, but thank you, everybody. Uh, just before we go, though, I will say uh, Lisa uh, has said about the positivity in in the, the position on how uh, the journalists take things, you know, the, um, how um, our politicians, particularly the journalists, how they see things going on a day to day basis. And it's sort of very negative, isn't it? The, the, the rhetoric, you could say sometimes. And I think really there needs to be some positivity in the news. I mean, sadly, it's bad news that sells. Um, but um, we do need to mix it up a little bit. It's not all bad news. There's always possibilities uh, to good news if we maybe train our minds into thinking slightly differently. Um, Andrew had an issue, Graham. He had an issue with um, a power cut. Has anybody had a power cut where you are? Me? No, we haven't had a power cut. You haven't had a power cut, Graham? Well, I haven't had a power cut. I mean, if we had, this the show would have stopped, right? But sadly... Um, others i think in the area have well actually andrew i think you're in the midlands aren't you so maybe there's something up there that's gone on i don't know um but no sad that we lost you uh, even if it was only temporarily 
Um, but no, Lisa, thank you for joining us again. And uh, maybe one day you'd like to come on the show. You're more than welcome. Um, and we'll, we'll get Robin back eventually. And of course, Lee, um, thank you all you guys for, for watching the stream and, and taking part. And uh, not just viewing, but taking part with the Monday Night Guest Show. Um, Graham, is there anything you want to say? No. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. No, it's been appreciated. And we are quite pleased that we've been able to get June on board. And... Um, we look forward to the next time. We most certainly do. Well, from the Ben and Graham show, uh, we say thank you very much to everybody. And please tune in again for our next show, which will be on Sunday evening next week and followed by Monday evening. Now, as far as I'm understood, Graham, those two shows will go ahead. Uh, I will need to check the calendar just to make sure that uh, there won't be any slight changes in the meantime. And if they are in need to be changed mm. then we will get in touch with you as soon as possible through the facebook page uh, but like i say if there's anything you want to see anything you want to do in within the show or if, there's, if you want to come on the show please get in touch with the page one of us will get in touch with you and um we will go from there but it's been great thank you very much mm -hmm. to everybody thank you matt uh for being part of us and being oh so he says he says hey, it's been a huge pleasure and thank you guys see you soon absolutely matt we'll see you very very soon thank you um grim yeah thank you ben thank you for being my co-host tonight and um, assisting where you can. And thank you everybody again for being with us, making it, making our our family unit whole. So thank you guys, it's appreciated. Family unit, absolutely. Well, thank you very much and have a good night everybody. And uh, you've been watching The Ben and Graham Show. <laughs>